Hey guys, my name is Will Blueball. I'm a freshman at the University of Dayton. And uh, I, I don't actually go to Resurrection, but I know a lot of you guys there. And I'm friends with a lot of people who graduated last year. So some of you, I'm sure I know some of you, and some of you probably know me through your older siblings, stuff like that. But so I'm here to talk to you today about something really awesome. Something that gets me really fired up. And that is the Triduum, the three most holy days of the year. Holy Thursday, where Jesus established the Eucharist and his presence in the Eucharist. Good Friday, where he died on the cross for us, saved us from our sins. And Easter Vigil, slash Easter Sunday, which is where he resurrected after being in the tomb for a day. So I'm going to focus in mainly on Good Friday today, though, because I think it's the most important day of all of them. It's it's the culmination of everything. It's the culmination of everything we've been working towards. It's the turning point. It's the reason we are here today as Catholics. It's the reason for us. And Good Friday, it details the passion of our Lord, his death. And the passion read on Good Friday comes from the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John is a little different than the other Gospels. The other three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are all synoptic Gospels, which means they're really similar in their views. But the Gospel of John has a little bit of a different view. And it focuses a lot on how Jesus is the Word made flesh, both man and God, dual natures. And today I'm just going to kind of focus on all the passages together, but I'm going to have a Good Friday theme on it. So I think... The most, the first thing I want to talk about with the passion is the fact that there is a part before, right before Jesus is about to be taken and arrested. And it's called the agony in the garden. And the agony in the garden is always really emotional to me because this is where it all starts for me. Jesus is in the, is in the garden and he's crying. He's crying. He knows what's about to happen to him because he's a human and he, he knows pain. He knows pain is about to happen to him. And he says, he talks to God and he says, and I can I visualize this from the movie, The Passion. And he says, Lord, if it's possible, take this cup away from me. But not my will. Not my will. Your will. Your will, Father, your will. I think that's the most powerful line. I have ever heard because it's the hardest thing to do. You know, he doesn't want to suffer. No one does. He's a man, but he's going to do it anyways because God needs him to, because God loves us. He's doing it for us. Uh, we say in the, our father all the time, thy will be done. Thy will be done. And a lot of times I feel like personally, one of my problems is I don't always mean it. I don't, we all need to do a better job of being able to listen to God, being his instrument, being an agent of God, taking his cup and doing his will. Because we were put here for three reasons, to know God, to love God, and to serve God. And our shining example is Jesus in this passion. He does all three of them to the max. He is who we should be following. He is the perfect example of how to take your cup and do the Father's will with it. And when we do that, my friends, God is pleased. And God loves us when we do that. We fulfill our destiny as being his beloved sons and daughters. So anyways, Jesus gets taken away, gets arrested, gets brought to the high priest. There's some fake trials and some of that nonsense goes on. It's very rigged against him. Uh, and all this, while this, while this is happening, Peter's out in the courtyard and Peter had promised earlier, Lord, I'll never deny you. Never, never, never. No chance. Of course I'm going to, I'm going to love you forever. I'll always be on your side till your death. Yet in the courtyard, Peter denies Jesus three times, three times. And I think Peter's really relatable to me because I, I, I feel where he's coming from. I wake up every morning and I'm like, I, I want I want to follow Jesus as well. I'm going to follow Jesus as well. Why would I not? And then yet every day I get distracted 
or I mess up or nothing goes 100% perfectly. And that's part of being human. We need God's forgiveness and we, need, we needed Jesus to die on the cross for us that day, for us to be fulfilled in that. Peter went on to become the Pope, do all these amazing things. We can turn it around too. We can be just like Peter, just like him. If we just, we, if we just reach our full potential because he took God's cup after that and he did God's will. He said, not my will, but your will. He turned everything around after that. Again, Jesus gets taken away to Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate's got all the power in the world to stop this from happening. He, he, but instead he washes his hands. He washes his hands of the matter. He says, this isn't my problem. You guys do with him as you will. And that, again, I can relate to that because Pilate commits a sin of omission. And I think a lot of times I do that too. You know, you see someone getting beaten up on or bullied or something bad happening and you don't do anything to stop it. I know I have that problem. I'm sure a lot of, I mean, every, all young people have that problem, but it's hard sometimes to stop, to do what's right. But God doesn't call us to take the easy path. He takes, calls us to take the hard path and to take his cup and not be selfish for ourselves, but to be selfless for him and do his will. That's part of taking the cup and doing his will. It's by standing up for those people. Being not like Pilate. So Pilate gives Jesus up and he gets taken by the guards. And the guards start whipping him. And they weave a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they what wrap him in this cloak and they're mocking him and spitting on him. And this is a really sad part for me because it makes me realize these are all the sins that we do. Just punching Jesus in the face. Just everything that we do to hurt to hurt him or hurt other people. It's, it's all coming to life right here. And this whole time, Jesus has forgiveness in his heart. He says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. He's still got all this forgiveness in his heart, even though he's getting beaten up, being forced to carry his cross to his own death, and being treated horribly. He wants all this to save us. He does it to save his beloved sons and daughters. And that, my friends, is the best feeling ever. He loves us that much that he's willing to put all that into us. All of it. He's willing to take that cup still after what we've done to him and still try to save us. The most admirable thing I've ever heard. He's truly a good savior. So he goes up to the hill. He's crucified. Nails get put into his arms and his feet and he dies on the cross. He says, it is finished. And in that moment, he changes everything. He changes everything about us. He transforms us from just having a life to, and he redeems all of our sins. We are redeemed in that moment. And it's really powerful. I, I think the passion itself is an amazing display, an amazing display of how we should be living. Jesus gives us the blueprint for how to do the will of God. You take the cup from the Father. It's really powerful. So, as we close Lent and we begin the Triduum, I'd like to encourage all of you to journey in a new way with Jesus. Journey in a new way with him. Take up, take up the cross with him. Take up your own cross. Carry it with him. Make an extra sacrifice. Appreciate what Jesus went through for you, for me, for all of us. He went through the greatest suffering that any man has ever gone through. And he did it all for us. His love for us, unconditional. Be proud to be a Catholic this week and every week in the future. Be proud to believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Be proud of everything he did for us. So I want to close with this. I read this really good quote the other day about by William Penn, and I'll just read it to you, I guess. It says, no pain, no palm, no thorns, no throne, no gall, no glory, no cross, no crown. God does not allow meaningless suffering. All these problems, all this suffering, 
It's for a reason. This pandemic that's going on right now outside, it's all for a reason. Okay, God has got it all under control. Even in these times of distress, we can stay strong together in solidarity and appreciate things like Jesus' passion and everything he did for us. Jesus' suffering wasn't meaningless. He went through it all for us to be saved. He wanted us to get saved. He cared about his beloved sons and daughters, each one of us, that much. And that is something we can hang on to every single day, no matter how bad or how terrible our day is. We know that Jesus loves us. And that, that, my friends, is all, all that we need. So let's make this the most meaningful and fulfilling triduum we've ever had. Both for us, but also for our Father in Heaven. Dare to take that cup, brothers and sisters. Dare to take that cup and say, not my will, not my will, but your will, your will, Father. God bless each and every one of you. Have a great triduum. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forevermore.